Coming up in this FinCast, I'll show you how to plant tissue culture plants that come in little plastic cups. I use the Chemapure Elite and uh, Nuvo 16 and you know, a couple teaspoons on each, in a bag on each side and change it out like once a month and it just keeps everything pure and clean, no phosphates, everything's good to go. Uh, it's pretty much a worry-free system because of the Chemapure. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I want to talk about tissue culture plants. These are plants that you're starting to see in the big box stores and you'll be seeing more and more of them that come in little plastic cups like this. And what they are is plants that have been raised in a different way than you typically would think of in terms of propagation. Here's how they do it. So tissue culture is also called micropropagation. And basically what this does is allow uh, the people who produce plants to do a whole lot of them from a single plant. Uh, you take one small piece of the original plant, it's sterilized, you remove everything that could be a negative in the aquarium, pathogens, uh, snails, whatever it might be, then you put it in a gel inside of a container and then the plant is allowed to multiply basically in a lab environment and then you can divide it and make numerous plants which are identical to the original plant. So it's kind of like cloning. So the advantages to it are you can produce a lot of plants from a single plant. Of course there's the ability to produce disease-free and pest-free plants and you can produce a lot of plants in a relatively small area like a laboratory and another advantage is that no pesticides are used. And, and by the way this has been done for a long time with house plants uh, and also agriculturally, but it's just found a way into the aquatic trade more recently to the point where you're now starting to see uh, these plants regularly available at the store. So I ordered two of a variety called Heteranthera. Uh, it's a zostrifolia, and this is a relatively common plant. It's relatively undemanding, easy to medium difficulty, and I thought, all right, this would, this would be a good thing to try. So uh, I got in two of the little plastic containers and they sat on my desk for a couple days. Again, one of the advantages is you don't have to plant these the day that you buy them. So if you rush, you don't have to rush back from the uh, local fish store uh, and get everything going in your aquarium. You can do it kind of when you have a moment to do it. So these sat on my desk for about a week. And when I unwrapped one of them, I could see that the uh, it wasn't looking the way I anticipated it looking down underneath. But anyway, so uh, let's go through the process and I'll show you what I found. So you take these things to the kitchen or the bathroom sink. You, uh, you pull the plastic off, you pull the plants out, and, uh, and basically what you'll be doing here is you'll be rinsing off uh, whatever for lack of a better word, substrate, but it can be a gelatin, but it's, it's the culture medium that they grow these plants in. So you rinse that off under running water, and then you should be left with a plant which you can then plant. Well, as I was going through the first cup, it wasn't looking exactly the way that I anticipated it looking. Again, this is my first time messing with the tissue culture plant. Um, now that one is looking a lot better. This was actually kind of an opportunity since we're doing this video where I could show you what it's not supposed to look like and what it is supposed to look like. After that, it's pretty straightforward. You, uh, you dump it all out in the sink, you use a light rinse, and you get all of the tissue culture media uh, off of the roots. And then what I even did for good measure was I filled the sink up and I just sort of let the plants float around for a little bit and, and swished them around with my hands because what that did is it got sort of the dead material from the growth process off of the plants. There's no sense putting that in your aquarium. It's just going to rot and then increase your nitrates in your fish tank. So that was a, a good process, I think. It's not one of the things that you'll see on in the instructions, but I thought it worked. Uh, and then uh, what that also does is it gives you, uh, uh, when you lift the plant up and you take a look at it, it gives you an opportunity to kind of see where the roots are and where the plant's going, which end goes in the substrate and so forth, because uh, it's not that easy uh, to tell just when they all come out in a bunch like that. It sounds simple, you know, roots end down, but it, it wasn't real obvious when they came out in a bunch. And then this is a good opportunity to remind you that uh, when you do plant the plants in your aquarium, you don't necessarily uh, want to take the whole clump and just put it in the substrate together. It's much better, better with these stem plants 
to uh, plant one at a time or no more than two at a time in a clump and then spread them out and what will happen is they'll grow together and you'll get a nice growth that's, uh, that's a plant the way that you envision it being in your aquarium. If you put them all in together with all the roots in one place, you're going to wind up with some big rotted sections and the plant's not going to be healthy and it's not going to thrive. So you want to do it one at a time, at the most two at a time. Uh, I think the instructions say break off into about five different sections of plants, so I probably uh, have uh, overkilled that just a little bit. You probably could do three at a time, but uh, I like to do one or two uh, at a clip, and that, so that's what I did. So uh, after all the rinsing, we went into the aquarium room, and I selected a spot that I wanted. I used tweezers, as always. It makes it so much easier to get the plants where you want them. Uh, and to uh, release in such a way that the plant stays in, the substrate comes around it, and the plants don't get dug up. And I chose a spot in front of my driftwood where I think this would be a nice looking plant, and I put it in the substrate. So we'll see how that goes. But I think that what we're going to find is that this is, this is going to do quite well here. Uh, the instructions say that these grow 30 centimeters, so 15 inches in 30 days. Uh, what is it, 2.54 centimeters per inch, but I'm doing that in my head. But I don't want them to really grow that tall there, so if they really do take off, which is kind of what we all hope for, I, I probably will be trimming it back a little bit, but we'll wait and see. Uh, so there it is. There's a look at the tissue culture plants, where they come from, and how it works. Again, let me remind you that this is part of my huge driftwood project. It's sort of a, a work in progress, but it's going very well uh, using some... Uh, some fertilizers from a German company called Dennerly, and I, I will tell you that I have started using uh, my gas CO2 system once again on this aquarium. I've just cranked it back up as of last week, so about a week now. I had it sitting there, but I was trying some liquid CO2, and that was working very well, but I ran out of it. Uh, which, you know, I'd love to tell you that I don't ever run out of things and I do everything perfectly, but as we all know with aquarium keeping, it, it doesn't happen. So uh, it's not that I didn't like the product. I liked it very much. But since I had the gas CO2 all set up and ready to go, I just turned it on and now I've got gas CO2 running into the tank. Uh, the other thing that I will tell you is that this is a part of a series of reports on this uh, particular aquarium and things are going very well with it. Uh, we've got some, some great little uh, pistogrammas in there and I've also added some killifish, which if... Uh, they intrigue me enough. I'll do a fin cast on that right now. They're looking, I bought, I ordered some cheap ones and they look like cheap ones. They're kind of ugly little gray fish right now, but if they develop into something pretty, well, maybe we can, we can talk about those in the future. Uh, at any rate, uh, appreciate you watching and thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, there is a, a whole playlist related to this aquarium, my huge driftwood project, and I'll put a, a card on there so you can click on that and see the other videos that are available. And if you don't like planted aquariums, I've got a whole selection on marine aquariums, uh, a lot of other stuff, African cichlids as well. I've, in fact, one of my most popular videos that I've ever done is how to set up an African cichlid aquarium, so that's out there as well. And we've got uh, over 120 Fincasts now. So I'm sure you can find something you like. I pretty much cover all the different topics related to aquariums. Having said that, happy holidays at the end of 2016. I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate your support of Fincasters. Please do leave a comment uh, down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next Fincast.